So guys, today on this not so nice fall day, we are going to be doing an EDC review of a pretty awesome EDC knife. And as the title already says, it's the Benchmade 550 Griptilian. And before we get into this, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome Alaskan content like this. Right into this review, this is actually the first Benchmade knife I ever got. And it's been a pretty awesome Benchmade. I've carried it for quite a few years. I don't really religiously carry it anymore as there are other options and of course being an EDC gear reviewer I try and keep more knives running through the rotation but this knife kind of is special because it is my first Benchmade that I ever got and so that's why I've kind of kept it around and the other reason I've kept it around is because it is still even though it has hateful serrations on it it still is a pretty capable knife overall especially in an everyday carry setting and so once again does unfortunately have serrations but back when I was first getting this knife I was kind of one of those kids at that time that really liked the whole black blades and serrations and all that kind of fancy stuff that really it was kind of a trend of being cool but the trend didn't really last because practically plain edges just end up being better <laughs> overall so yeah that is that is basically why this one has serrations on it and as you guys will notice I tried my hardest it still it was a little bit hard but as I was processing up that pizza box of an awesome pizza company um, I was trying to actually split some of the testing between just the straight edge and just the serrations it is a little bit hard because this blade is not the longest blade and so it can be a little bit difficult when you're trying to kind of slice through something to just keep it on just the serrations or just the blade and I also did a little bit of intermix so you know if you're just a straight slash right through the cardboard you'd first catch the serrations and then the plain edge so there's gonna be a little bit of mixture but I wanted to kind of show you guys what it looked like with just the plain edge and what it looked like with just the serrations I will say I think the serrations had a bit of an easier time with uh, parts of the cardboard I think they might be a little bit better at kind of breaking up the cardboard fiber kind of just going right through it uh, so partially serrated blades aren't entirely bad but they definitely are not my favorite they do have some better applications such as fibrous materials like cardboard and especially ropes uh, serrations tend to go through a lot faster but same time they can be a little bit harder to maintain and overall I think they kind of just don't look that good <laughs> anyways so my overall experience with this knife has been for the most part really good I've really enjoyed this knife and there's a reason other than this just being my first bench made why this knife has stuck around with me for the past like around five or six years bench made really it's just an overall great knife now I currently have this one on a lanyard because I don't really like the bench made clips and so I, I thought I would just run this one on a lanyard and I don't run it that frequently that when I do occasionally run this knife I kind of like to mix it up and just kind of throw it in the pocket and just kind of run it that way because every once in a while I do enjoy a lanyard knife instead of one that has a pocket clip on it so <clears throat> that is how it's running as far as retention or in the pocket carry um, as far as overall ergonomics go they've been pretty great I mean this knife it does use just like FRN handles they're nothing special it's just like a plastic handle and you can definitely tell they kind of feel a little cheap but at the same time that that cheapness does pay off because these knives are still pretty affordable for what you're getting and so that the cheap material and the handles helps you to have a better blade material and a higher quality knife at a lower price so I really can't complain about the material as far as the material does go it has stood the test of time and I've abused the knife quite a bit and accidentally like dropped this knife in the closed position thank the Lord on things like stone and rock and it has a few gashes in the handle to prove of that but uh, the handle hasn't shattered or it hasn't really cracked in any ways so other than that uh, the, for the most part the ergonomics are pretty squared away this is not really a tactical knife but it could be used in that way you do have jimping back here for the, your thumb 
and so it could I will say I don't know if the 550 having a kind of reverse sheet foot blade uh, is the best option for a tactical knife because it's not the absolute most pointy because your tip is kind of downward sloping certainly not like another knife that's similar uh, like this one and the primary reason why the Insingo grind is so much better at penetration is because uh, Chris Rees has actually gone in and put uh, cuts on the, both of the tops or both sides of the top of this tip and uh, helped thin out the overall blade material here and put a false edge on the top so it kind of aids in penetration. So that, I will say, is why that downward sloping tip on the Insingo grind works so well. Uh, but this one obviously does not have that. So other blade features that I do really enjoy are not the serrations, because I don't really enjoy those, but I do actually love the opening hole. I I am a bit of fan of spider cone knives. I wish I could have more of them, but right now I only have one of them in the current collection. And even though I only have one, I still love all these spider co hole opening knives and including when Benchmade puts a spider hole on their knives, regardless of how controversial that is or isn't. I still really enjoy that. I, I really do like that and I like that a lot more than the 551 I believe it is the one that just has the thumb studs which is not bad I have a few thumb stud uh, bench maids this one included and uh, the 56 and so thumb studs are not the worst thing in the world but I kind of like these uh, hole openers more but I do like the, the hole overall it also kind of lightens the blade stock a little bit more and as far as the 5D just the 550 goes uh, I do like the blade shape a little bit more this one is in a black I forget the coating that they use for this but as you guys can see this one has been heavily used and a bit abused on the tip and uh, it definitely has a bit of a wear on this coating but for the most part this coating is a pretty tough black coating and it's not too tacky. I know some people don't like SE coatings because they're really tacky and this one just like any coating does have a bit of tackiness to it but for the most part it is overall pretty smooth and like I said within reason pretty durable. I mean most of this tip uh, kind of wear here has happened when I actually stabbed this knife into some tin cans. This was really early on and I stabbed this knife into some tin cans to like make a hobo stove or a couple hobo stoves actually and uh, that's what actually primarily wore off this coating was that contact with the tin can on the steel just kind of took the coating right off so that's a pretty good abuse to take the coating off so I'm not too surprised that the coating wore off when doing that and then on the back of this I also use this knife quite a bit for striking ferro rods because it does have a pretty sharp back on it so the back of this knife is actually the coating is pretty beat up because I'll use it a lot to strike ferro rods as far as the lock goes this is of course an axis lock and I love axis locks if you guys haven't noticed I have or have had uh, a lot of bench maids in the collection and th that is on purpose I do really love bench made axis locks in particular uh, so overall I really love their axis lock it's a fun lock to use you can't really have a knife that smooth without a bit of side to side play so like these types of knives will have you know just a little bit of side to side play but that's that's because they're so smooth or like I said overall up and down play is absolutely nothing and very solid lockup for six years and I do go in and I kind of clean this one every once in a while when there's kind of dirt built up on the actual axis lock because that can kind of at times hinder your lockup but <clears throat> that's about all I do for it. Blade centering for anyone who cares this one's actually pretty well centered. Now on to the actual blade as far as it goes and edge retention. This is of course a 154 cm version so this isn't anything special. I know they've made some like S30V CPM 20V uh, blades and higher end steels for the Griptilian and I'm sure those work just like CPM S30V normally works or just how CPM 20V normally works in itself but the 154 cm on this works pretty well. I did get one off knife 
a Benchmade Barrage that I still have, which was my second Benchmade, that I think they overheat treated because that one is really hard to put an edge on. But I have a few CPM, or not CPM, but 154 CM from Benchmade and they overall, they don't hold an edge forever, but they do sharpen up pretty fast and pretty easily, this one included. And it holds an edge for a decent amount of time. It's not the most amazing steel, but it's definitely better than something like 440C or even VG10 in my opinion. And so edge retention is pretty good in that regard. Uh, the overall blade on this, I think I would have enjoyed a lot more had it been a plain edge. And I do actually really like the 550 in plain edge. Uh, this serration version or serrated version is not the worst in the world it definitely in an edc type of format does perform pretty okay like you can see how well the serrations were to able to chew through like cardboard once again rope things like paper it kind of struggles with because there's just so many angles of contact with the serrated blade that it can cause the paper or thinner materials that you're trying to cut to kind of like crinkle instead of just slicing right through it other than that, like I said, I really don't have any complaints. I find the blade length to be just fine for most EDC tasks. Uh, personally, I've always been more a fan of these kinds of more wider and larger blades. So like with this 940 here, you can see how kind of like pencil thin this 940 is. And some people, they love just having like a really thin blade. But I tend to like knives that are more like the Griptilian here and more like this, the Benza, that have more kind of width to them. That just overall, they seem like larger, more well-built knives. Not to say that this is not a well-built knife. I'm sure this is. But this overall kind of gives more of a just feels like you're actually holding more of a knife and i kind of like that in a knife personally and that's more aesthetics so anyways that's basically all i have to say on the benchmade 550 griptilian with this awesome lanyard mod that i did to it and that's basically all i have to say on it as always god bless and i'm out